Welcome back to another desktop publishing tutorial using the free software Scribus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add images to your documents, and we'll be looking a lot at the properties uh, options. So properties of different objects, images, text, and that's probably all we're going to get to today in this video, but it's going to be super good to learn. So to get started, we need to open up uh, or create our document. We can click on this blank page here, and it brings up a dialog to create a document, or if I hit cancel, we can also get that same dialog by clicking File and then going to New, and it brings up this dialog. It says, what kind of document do you want to do? We'll do single page. We'll leave everything how it is here. We have our margins. We don't have any bleed set, but um, we'll learn about that later too. So we just click OK, and we see our margin is right here, this blue line, and our page size is this red line. So this is kind of like what the, the whole page is going to look like when it's printed. This is just a regular piece of printer paper, 8.5 by 11 inches. So right now we're on our selection tool. We can see we have a blue outline around this box for our selection tool. So if we left click and hold, we can select. We can try to select something, but there's nothing to select right now. But I just want to point out that we are on a selection tool. And every time we like press escape, it'll default to our selection tool. Or if we just, after we create, like if I come up here to this image frame and left click, and left click and drag, as soon as we were done creating it, it goes back to our selection tool. So our selection tools sort of are always what we have, what we're using the most of. Um, I just created an image box. To delete it, I'm going to left click on it, hit the delete key, and it goes away. So to do that, I just hover it over here, and it, this says image frame. The shortcut key for that is I, so if we press the I key on our keyboard and then left click and drag, it'll create an image frame. I'm going to hit the delete key to delete this one again. Another way we can insert an image is by going to insert and then go to image frame and then left click, we can put an image there. So the reason we're doing an image frame rather than just importing an image is because with Scribus, every time we want it to do something, we have to tell it exactly the use. So it's not going to be like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice and just assume that we want to start typing in the top left corner of this page. Instead, it's just going to say, all right, you've got a page this size, now what do you want to do? Because for all it knows, maybe this is a calendar that we want to create a calendar to hang on the wall, and we don't necessarily want to type. We want to have maybe a picture at the top of here, and we want to have text below, and we don't want to like hit the return key a bunch of times. Like if we did a text box, we could. We, this is kind of how Microsoft uh, Word is going to be by default. The whole page is also a text frame. So if you want to add text only at the bottom, you have to do this. Hit enter a bunch of times, and go all the way to the bottom, and then type in your text. This is my text. That's how you would accomplish it in Microsoft Word, but we don't do that in, a, in Scribus. Instead, I'm going to take this whole text frame and delete it. If we want to write text only at the bottom, we only create our text box at the bottom of the page. Then we left click, and then we say, this is my text. That's not to say you can't have a text box over the whole page. It's just, it's just not the, it's just not ideal, um, and you'll probably see why uh, sh soon here. So, and if we want to have an image, th the same thing. We wouldn't, we wouldn't create an image for the whole page, and then only have that image appear in the top right. If we only want the image to appear in the top right, we left click on the image and we draw it in just where we want it to be. So this is a, a called an image uh, frame. And this is called the text frame. So these different frames are how we tell Scribus what we want to put in this portion of the document. So under this image frame, it's drawn, it's drawn a frame here that we can put an image in. So we need to choose an image to put in there. So to do that, we'll right click and go get image. And that brings up this dialog where we can search on our computer for a picture. I'm just gonna do this one here, this TJ uh, icon logo. And we see, if we can't see the whole thing very well because it brings in the picture at full size, and then we just see a little window here of, of where it is. If we left click, uh, double click very quickly, we can actually control, we can click and drag and move this around. We can see certain parts of this image because this text frame is basically just creating a window to see through to here. So we can only see a certain part of the picture if we want. And the reason that's nice, so if we want to just do the whole thing, we can just go uh, right click, adjust, Im uh, adjust image to frame, and it'll shrink it down. And now the image, oops, but it's not centered yet. Now the image is the size of the frame, roughly. 
But sometimes we don't want to do that. Sometimes, for example, I'm going to delete this. Sometimes we'll have an image frame, and we want we have a, a layout where we have a footer at the bottom of the page, and we want a nice picture here, and then we have some other content here. Sometimes our our page is designed in such a way that it doesn't we can't actually resize this. This is the the only size we have. So if I want to go to right click and go get image and grab my uh, icon. So in this case, I would actually kind of want to just like adjust this, you know, accordingly, or maybe I'd use a different image. But we don't want to resize this because then it might cut into whatever's happening in our document down here. Uh, and so that's really the power of using Scribus. If you have a, a publication that you produce weekly or monthly or even semi-annually, uh, maybe like a church publication or a business newsletter, and you want it to have a consistent feel, like have a certain header at the top here, and two columns of text. This is a great way to do that, that you can just switch out the text, switch out the image every month without having to come in and redesign from scratch. And it, it creates a nice consistent look and feel to your publication. Uh, so let's look at the properties of this image. Befo besides just, we learned we can double click and move it around, we learned we can switch the image, but if we right click and go down to properties, it brings up this properties menu. And this is something we'll use all the time, not just with, we use it with our pictures, our text. This is how we control the properties of whatever object is selected. So right now, it's the image is selected. But if I click here on the text box, we see the text is selected. So if the first thing that comes up is the name of the, of the, of the object. This is called text5. And we can rename this if we want and call it uh, footer text since it's the text at the, at the footer of the page and then we can oh, now I'm not selected on anything you see since I've selected off of it everything becomes grayed out so to get those options back I have to left click again on whatever I want to change we have X position and Y position if we change those it'll actually move so we see our our footer box is moving around so it's just moving based on where I'm telling it to go here we can also left click and drag and move it around that way and we can resize it here too so we can resize the size of the text frame, and we can also resize the, uh, in here as well. Uh, the actual text in there, I'm going to cover in another video, changing font and size and, uh, yeah, changing all that. We'll do that in another video. Um, but this also shows this first one. This, this tab is called XYZ. If we click the little triangle in the top left of it, it, it compresses down, and now we don't see those options. And if we want to see those options again, we just click on the tab and it brings it down so we can see. And we can open multiple tabs at once. So every one of these things is a different tab that we're going to go over and learn how to use. But what I want to show you with it, under the XYZ it has the location of the frame and then also the level that the frame is on. So right now if we drag this frame over top of this text it disappears because it's behind the text, or, be, or I'm sorry, the image. If we drag the text over top of the image the text disappears. But if we, want to, if we want to see it written over top of this blue letter T, we just bring it up a level. And that's how we can make it appear on top. So if we send it down a level, it goes, it disappears behind the image. If we bring it forward, it comes above. And that'll make a big difference in the future when we have lots of different objects on the screen and we want certain ones to be over top of another. I'm gonna left click and bring this down here. I'm gonna show you, if we click on the image now, it's called image eight. We could we could call it header image just to keep us keep things straight for us. So we know this is the header image. This is the footer text. We can change the location of this as well. But if we minimize this this X Y Z and we go down to image, we also have some control for the actual image within the frame. So the X Y Z this only controls the size of the frame and the location of the frame. But the image tab down here actually controls the size of the image within the frame. Does that make sense? It's a little bit, it's kind of it's kind of breaking down two options, two different properties that are usually all rolled into one with a lot of software. So we can control the size, we can control the location, the position of the text within the frame as well. Um, and then we can, right now it's under free scaling, if we go uh, to this like, fit it to the, the, the size of the actual frame and then we can lower it down back, uh, back to zero back to zero here we can also just type in numbers to bring that in as well 
Uh, that's about, I think that's about all we're going to look at in this one. Just know that there are some different things, uh, especially for the, when we get into the text, changing like the colors of the text. There's a, it's an option to do it here, but there's some other ways to do it as well. So just, I would say, I'm going to end this video, but get familiar with this properties panel. Draw some different text frames. Maybe start to draw some of these different things, explore some of these different things we can draw like shapes and then look at different options for them, for controlling them. In fact, in the next video, we'll probably do, well, the next video, we're going to focus more on text, I guess. But I appreciate you watching this. Go ahead and like and subscribe, comment below, and I'll catch you in the next video.